So this week's case is a very interesting one. I got this case from the rheumatologist and he wanted, or he did an ultrasound, it's a bursitis and kind of like a mess like uh, thing in the bursa, subacromialis or subdeltoid bursa here. And you can see there is um, clear bursitis. We have this huge bony uh, proliferation or antisiophytic change here at the undersurface of the acromion, which will also predispose for subacromial impingement. And you can see how the bursa gets indented here. So really nice that we can see that. And so the question was, is this PVNS uh, based on ultrasound? We were not able to kind of like get your head around this. So let's have a look at the MRI. And I think when I first looked at it, uh, and because it's coming from a rheumatologist, okay, you can think maybe patient has underlying rheumatoid arthritis and they might not have told me um, but normally the information that I get from them is really good. So what we can see here is obviously clearly bursitis and there's also some contrast, post-contrast study here. But inside these things, like if you think about, okay, these are all synovial proliferations, we would expect enhancement of these things, right? So when I looked at this, I was thinking, okay, bursitis, maybe rice bodies or something because it's not enhancing, right? So that's where I was initially primed when I went through the study and I had rheumatoid arthritis, rice bodies, okay. But it, they're a bit too small for for that some areas are bigger and more irregular than typical rice bodies and then we have these other bits and pieces so these are basically perfusion artifacts of the suprasmenalis tendon and then here's some enhancement where we have articular uh, bursa-sided partial tears of the suprasmenalis and also anterior bits of the infraspinatus up to maybe 50 percent or so of the suprasmenalis tendon so uh, the reason why i show you this case is because uh, it shows how valuable a t1 sequence can be sometimes um, or any like non-fat set for that matter. But here, so I only saw this at the very last when I was going through the case. I mean, there's some other findings. We got the ganglesis, we have uh, some slap tear here, fraying and degeneration, beginning slap tear here with this ganglesis here. So I called it a tear because of the ganglion and uh, the lateral extension of the line. But I think then bursitis tears and the bursitis. Okay, so then at the very last, when I scroll through here, so here it's it's a bit irregular, but doesn't really give it away. But when you go here, now this is this was kind of like the image when I thought, okay, look, it's actually fat. Um, not quite clear on this image, and you you can't really quite appreciate the fatty nature of it. I mean, obviously here, when you put them next to each other, so we need to have the two fatty or the two sagittal series here next to each other. We could see, okay, when I go here, some of these bits. Here, for example, they might actually be fat, but it's not quite obvious um, to look at. If you go to the T1, you basically focus on this. You see it's very irregular from the bursitis because you have naturally fat also surrounding here. It was not quite obvious, but the key really was then on this image. And then you understand, okay, there is actually fat inside the bursa. So which makes total sense. And you can see here, uh, these tiny lobulated things are fat. So what can fat be in a bursa? So basically it's uh, what we know from the knee, lipoma or breast tends, uh, or fatty metaplasia of the synovium. I think both are related. I think the lipoma or breast tends kind of like diagnosis is not well clear understood fully, but because it's a bit mass-like and it's way more than what we normally see, um, I call it fatty metaplasia, which I think essentially is lipoma or breast tends. So you have these proliferations where they're not normally present um, and chronic bursitis, most likely from subacromial impingement with this bony stamp here. Chronic inflammation leading to a fatty metaplasia of the synovial tissue or with infiltration of the synovial membrane and replacement of the tissue with mature adipocytes. I will link a description also about exactly this. So I think this is really nice case of lipoma arborescens or fatty metaplasia from chronic bursitis in this subacromial impingement case. Whether there is underlying rheumatoid arthritis or anything like that, which can also, um, you know, not cause, but, you know, the lipoma arborescens, but, under, you know, keep a inflammation going with the chronic bursitis kind of thing. That's something for the rheumatologist to see. Um, yeah. So a very interesting case. Um, I'll post a link also to the article. Yeah, thanks for being in the Accelerated program and see you next week.